Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be taking a look at a Lubuntu 18.10 which is codenamed Cosmic Cuttlefish. Now I'm most excited to take a look at this distribution because they have finally moved from the old LXDE desktop to the new LXQt desktop. Although I may have uh, gotten too excited about this and looked at it too early. Now I'm looking at it on the day of formal release for Ubuntu, but I don't believe this distribution has actually been formally released. Although we have to take into consideration the underlying system has been at formal release and the desktop itself hasn't changed a huge amount. But maybe there'll be an odd couple of things that will change. Although running the system, I've not noticed any particular issues. But let's take a look at it and see what this new desktop environment is like. Starting with the underlying components, we get Linux kernel 4.18, Mesa 18.2.2, and the option to install the NVIDIA 390 graphics drivers. Looking at the memory usage at system boot up, we have 320 meg of RAM in use. I believe that was fairly similar to the LXDE version of Lubuntu, and this is taken into consideration that it's both the 64-bit versions I'm comparing. On the subject of architecture, you can download either the 32-bit or 64-bit version of Lubuntu. Ubuntu are scaling back on the option of having a 32-bit architecture. As of the version 18.10 release, it is only Lubuntu and Zubuntu to offer 32-bit. So perhaps the writing is on the wall for older systems. But moving over to the desktop, we have LXQt version 0.13.0. .0. So as you can see, they are selling it as an easy to use, fast desktop environment based on Qt technologies. So it is easily compatible with a lot of the applications you can get in the Kubuntu distro, or KDE in general. We have Qt version 5.11.1, same version I'm using in KDE Neon. Applications that I'm familiar with using in KDE should work perfectly in the LXQt desktop. So yes, I thought why not try it, and I installed a couple of applications I use in KDE. And one advantage you have is the seamless theming by default. So we have the dark theming in KDE and Live, and in Kate we have a lighter theming. Yeah, all looks very nice, and it is very quick and responsive. I would say it is actually quicker than the Plasma desktop. So yeah, a bit embarrassing for KDE when the LXQt desktop is quicker. Although a price you pay is fewer features on the desktop. For example, searching the application menu for a file doesn't actually yield any results. But it does work for application names, or even the type of application. The file manager is a cute equivalent to what we had in LXDE, this is PCMan FM Qt. A lot of the applications that we had in LXDE have had to be ported across to Qt. And from what I'm seeing in the application list, it seems to have been a success. We are no longer in a situation of having multiple different bases. And for example, checking here on the LX image, it does state that it is Qt. You can choose to use the Compton renderer, and I've enabled transparency. So the menus now look a little bit different. I can see that little fading on the menus. Opening up a couple of applications now gives a partial transparency, and that is a setting that I've enabled. I just thought, why not see how it looks? It does slow it down a bit on the rendering, but hey, why not have some fancy effects in what is a lightweight operating system? The layout of the desktop is very similar to what it was in the older versions of Lubuntu. We have the application launcher, a desktop switcher, shortcuts to some applications. On the right hand side you've got a removable device manager, volume control, clipboard, network, time and calendar. The selection of applications has changed slightly. For example on Office you now get LibreOffice instead of the lightweight equivalents of GNumeric and Abbey Word. So I suppose in some respects we've thrown all notion of lightweight out of the window and going with more fully featured applications. Default media player is VLC and you get Firefox as the browser. I've seen them switching between Falcon and Firefox during development. One feature of Ubuntu 18.10 was it was supposed to be faster at launching Snap-based applications. So I did try out a Snap application in Lubuntu. I can't say I've noticed a huge improvement really, but you still have the issue of lack of theming in Snap applications. It's not a fault of Lubuntu, it's an overall fault with how Snaps are sandboxed. For the application installer, we get Discover. It's an interesting one to see. With Discover, you can install either the Snap or Deb package-based applications. 
It doesn't quite boast about snaps like the Ubuntu Software Center does. Let's go across to the settings and I'll show you the window effects. This is what I've chosen and it requires Compton to run the transparency. Yeah, I'll just enable transparent windows. That's about the only change I've actually done. I left all these settings as default. I like fade during opacity changes. Well, I suppose disabling that would actually speed up the rendering or at least reducing the time would speed up the rendering. We do have a configuration center for LXQ. It seems very similar to the configuration centers we have in the other Linux desktop environments. Although I will say it's a bit more basic on the desktop. For example, searching the wallpapers, you actually have to go and navigate to the wallpaper folder and there we find it's the old 1804 wallpapers. But can I really criticize them for not changing the wallpaper when they've done a massive job on changing the desktop environment? No, not really. I would prefer the development team to focus on what is the most usable part of the system and at least some of the theming as well. We can change wallpaper ourselves. Not an issue there. So yeah, it's certainly an interesting advancement for Lubuntu. And from what I'm seeing in the LXQ desktop, the theming looks good. Stability is good. So yeah, I'm impressed. Is it worth replacing the long-term support version of Lubuntu 18.04 with what is an interim release of Lubuntu 18.10? Well, I suppose that depends on would you like a different desktop environment? And if you do, yeah, it's a good replacement. It's still a good lightweight replacement. And even after using the system for a little while, opening up various applications, including a snap-based application, the memory usage has crept up to 550 meg of RAM, which given that I've allocated the system 8 gig, is not really a lot at all. That was a look at Lubuntu 18.10. Thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.